Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm just bringing up comments so I can see you when you come in. Hi, it's Jane. This is What Are You Reading? And we have a very special guest today. We have Liz Foster. And you would know her book, A Good Woman's Guide to Making Better Choices. Uh, we've been sharing the book at Better Reading. And uh, we thought it'd be nice to have her in today and uh, chatting to everyone. So uh, come on and make her feel welcome. It always takes a little bit of time for, for them all to come on. And then you're going to see some regular comments. Here we go, Carolyn. Hello, Jane and Liz. And they share what they're reading. So and Helen's, hi, Jane uh, and Liz. Chris, hi, good afternoon. Hi, these are, oh, Sharon Hill, Yvonne Luckers, good afternoon, ladies. These are our regulars, I love it. Jane, yeah, love yeah. <laughs> it's great, oh, nice. yeah. And um, and Carolyn's reading and they share what they're reading. So Carolyn's reading uh, Mr. Penebra's 24, nice. Pen do you Mr. know it? No. Oh, I don't even know it. It, it, it must, is it a translation? Dex. No, oh, because Dex knows that, yeah, he's, he's big on the translate. Yes, it's a Korean translation. Dex is all over it. Yeah. That looks um, great. Yeah, it looks really interesting. We will check that one out. So, welcome to What Are You Reading? And as you can see, they're going to share what they're reading, and we're going to share what we're reading. Hi, Tracy. You're reading Flawless by Elsie Silver. Um, Jill says hello. Julie says hello. Alita says, Hi, I'm reading The Silent Country by Di Morrissey. Rosie, hi, ladies. Good to see you, Liz. Oh, Hello, hi, Jane Rosie. and Liz, Tanya. Um, okay, great. We've got, um, oh, picked up your book from the library yesterday, Jane. Can't wait to read. Good. I, I look forward to hearing what you think, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Liz, tell us about your book. So let's hold this up. This is Liz's book, your debut. My debut, or my debut published novel. Yes. I did write another one that's in the drawer, like everybody. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so it came out in January this year, summer launch, um, post-Christmas, and it's about um, a woman called Libby. She lives a sort of golden life with her um, husband, Ludo, in Bondi. They've got a family, and she's a country girl. She comes from a country, country girl at heart, but that's okay, Ludo's wealthy, makes a lot of mm. money, that's all right. She's, you know, she understands that she's lucky. Uh, and then one day there's a knock at the door and it's the police and they basically arrest him, mm. um, which is not really a spoiler because it kind of happens in the first yeah. page or two. Yeah. So so she's kind of left with this scenario where she loses everything and, and we all wonder as a reader, well, how will she cope? What will she do? Mm. She's got no money, she's got nowhere to live. Um, literally nothing. Um, but also, what would you do if yeah. it was your partner? You know, you're going about your business and you've chosen to structure your family in a mm. way that one of you is the income earner and the other's not. And you're obviously not questioning your partner every time they come home saying, what did you do today and was it legitimate? Mm. <laughs> you, mm. you just assume that, you know, it's all, it's all above board. Uh, and then it turns out that, you know, he has been obviously not doing the right thing and not just uh, from a corporate perspective, but he's also um, affected people close to her. Mm. And so it becomes personal and she has to she has to find a way to get through it, but mm. she also has to find a way to recompense because she's such a good person. Mm. <laughs> mm. She is. She really is. And let us know if you've actually read this. Um, and if not, why not? No. <laughs> let us know if you have. Um, it's a really, uh, it's a heartfelt story. Um, it really is like the phoenix rising from the ashes for her as well because um, it's a massive reality check on her life. And, um, and I think that it's not, I mean, while the, the actual scenario, um, the premise here is not as common, uh, it is not an uncommon thing for women to have to experience and particularly around, uh, you know, financial, I'm using the word abuse and that's not quite right here, but sort of starting again financially financial and all of that. Yes, yeah. Um, and, and so it is actually quite a common thing for women mm -hmm. and I think it, it actually would be a really great book club 
read as well because there are a lot of conversations that could be had mm. around this. So where did the initial inspiration come from for this book? Well, thank you for those lovely words, by mm. the way. Um, it was really uh, the Melissa Caddick um, mm. debacle. So uh, obviously not everyone here is in Sydney, but I'm pretty sure it was national news. Yes. Um, and she was the fraudster that would, made her money by uh, defrauding close family and friends. Mm. Um, and her partner, who's a hairdresser, you know, was none the wiser but the poor guy I felt like he was he got you know wasn't didn't get a lot of good press but I thought well look it would be exactly the same if it was the other way around if it yeah was I always felt for him too I so yeah I'll be sorry for him <laughs> yeah. um, you know he's just going about his business and, yeah and um anyway she that's how she made her money as you may remember. yeah and, yeah and it was it was just so personal mm. you know she was not just her family, and we're talking her parents, her brother, mm. but her best friend. Mm. Um, like I listened to the excellent Kate McClymont podcast series and there was this interview with her best friend where where the bestie has called her one Saturday morning, what are you doing? And the bestie said, oh, you know, I'm family catch up tonight with mom and dad were having a party. And, and Melissa's gone, what do you mean I'm family too? You've got to invite me. You know, and oh, isn't that lovely? She thinks she's family. She invites her along because she's working the room. <laughs> she got like three clients out of it. Oh, I'm just listening to this podcast thinking, how could you do it? And then I thought, how would you feel if it was your partner who'd done it? Mm. You know, and you're just going about your business. Mm. Um, so that's what made me, that was the original inspo. Um, and anyone that's read the book or mm. make, may yet read the book um the the fraud takes a slightly different structure yes she she did a classic ponzi scheme mm. uh, and evidently they take years and years to prosecute so when when asic knocked on her door it had been burbling in the wings for a good two mm. years and mm. it would have been another year or two before she was prosecuted and very often they don't see jail either they just get fined so none of that suited my story. I needed him to go to jail. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. So I changed it a little bit to a sort of failed uh, startup when you're fundraising mm. for a failed startup and then you continue to fundraise after after it's failed, which is obviously fraudulent. So, mm. But, mm. but that was the inspo. Yeah. Mm. I've just seen um, someone say, uh, Melissa, oh, it sounds very interesting and different, which is great. It is different. It is. And, uh, you know, really heartfelt. And I, I was reading it thinking, and funny, um, but uh, I was thinking, oh, you know, what would I do in this situation? And to be honest, I've, not in this situation, but I've been in situations where you kind of hand over to your bloke you know, as you do, you know, and then that's over and they're gone and you're left going, oh, my God, like, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> where is everything kept, yeah, <laughs> all the financials? Right. <laughs> well, what's, what's the password manager? Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, we've got some reads here. Let's have a, a look, go back a bit. Um Oh, reading the beacon, Yvonne is um, set in Byron Bay near you, Yvonne. So yes, it is. He's a local up there, isn't he? Um, Kylie says hi, ladies. Welcome aboard, Liz. Currently reading the Quiet Tenant. Ah, oh, I think we Sounds had good. we did that here. Uh, Rosie, the librarians of Cairo. That sounds cool. I don't think I've seen it really that. Does. Yeah. Um, Melissa, hi Jane. Haven't seen a live for so long. Good to have you back. Yes, where have you been? Reading, working, maybe working. Um, uh, Stacey, reading Tilda is Visible, loving it. And loved yours, Liz. That's cool. Oh, look, both of us feel really happy now. That's good. <laughs> um, uh, Helen, I've just finished What Happened to Nina, started to ask no questions, and The Widow of Walker by Emma Partridge. All great mm. reads. Very good. Um, Iona, I'm reading The End of the Story by AJ Finn, enjoying the book. I think, did we have him on the podcast? I think we did, didn't yeah. we? Quite, yeah, some time ago. I think that was his debut. Um, uh, Tanya's listening to, I'm currently listening to Body of Lies by Sarah Bailey. Very good. Um, Teresa, finally reading The Da Vinci Code. Damn good read. I hate to admit it, but I 
bloody loved that book. I really did. It's excellent. I really did. It was a cracking read. And a good yeah. movie. Yes. I think the movies lose their way a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love all of that kind of religious, Same. historical kind of mystery. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. So, um, Kaz, I'm reading Has Anyone Seen Charlotte Salter by Nikki French. If you look on Facebook, I did a, a year ago, around this time last year, they were in Australia, they, meaning um, married couple uh, who write together as Nikki French and uh, it's on the Facebook um, lives if you go back and have a look at it or someone might put the link in here it is absolutely fascinating how they well right, how they process. married how they have a life together and then how they write together on top of it you know without wanting to hit each other it's really yeah, it's a it's a great great conversation about the craft of writing. Actually, oh, it was I really up. enjoyed it. Yeah, um, Jill has just about to start a preview copy of The Gallows Bird by Barbara Sumner. Yes, I've just seen that on the shelf, and I it looks really interesting. Um, I'm reading The Woman. This is Sue by Kristen Hannah, another great book from her. Yes. Meredith Griffin, I am hello, Jane and Liz. I've just um started Tilda is Visible. Oh no, I've forgotten the name of the author. But a boom. Very good. I love it. <laughs> uh, I love all these regulars. Like you get to know them, Liz. It's really cool. And all right. Good reading tips. Yes. Yeah. Ahead. And we go back actually after as well and have a look at the ones and note down the ones that oh, we good. um haven't Some heard of. of. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> just speaking of reading tips, what have you got for us there? So so um a few things I've read recently, a couple of Aussie books and some international books. So I'll just mix it up. Um, yeah. I'll start with this one just because it's sitting here in front of me. So uh, Jojo Moyes, mm. someone else's shoes. So uh, I'm sure we've all heard of Jojo Moyes. Obviously, me before you is mega massive. Mm. Um, but I really love her other books. This one, someone else's shoes, and another one she wrote called The One Plus One. I just think that the cleverest books I've ever yeah. read. And, and what I love about them, and this book particularly, mm. Is is that um, it's it's kind of a love story, but it's not a pure romance. So there's no obvious romantic tropes. It's not like you read it and think, oh, that's obviously you, you know with romances mm. what's going to happen. You just don't know how it's going to happen. But it's not like that. It's mm. really fun, very cleverly written. The characters are great. So original. Um, honestly, I couldn't put it down. So mm. I thought that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, then also just finished um, by Aussie Irish author Burr Carroll, um, mm. her, The Other Side of Her. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for throwing that up. Yeah. I was looking at the book on the table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The same one. No, because she has another one coming out, everyone. I know that Burr's very popular here as well. Yes. So One of Us is Missing is out 30th of April, mm. but you read her last one there. Yes, mm. and Burr is obviously gone because the – this book, The Other yeah. Side of Her, and it came out in about the same month, November. And so she's backing up within a year, which, of course, Jane and I, no. <laughs> I'm just limping. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to make matters worse, we've all got the same publisher, so no pressure there. Um, anyway, The Other Side of Her, wonderful. And, again, really, really uh, original. Yeah. Quite cleverly written. I, I loved the pace of it. Like it, it felt, uh, it didn't feel like, oh, my God, I'm totally frenetic, uh, but it didn't feel, it was just, uh, there was just enough tension to keep you going whilst feeling um, like it was, it was a really cleverly written story as well. And there wasn't mm. all that much to it. Mm. There weren't many people in it. Mm. Um, so I thought that it was very clever. It was definitely something you take away as an author and think, oh, I don't know. Wish I could drive that mm, mm, yeah, I really liked it, and um, I'm looking forward to the next one. So, yeah, following up very quickly with another one. Um, and you have a debut author to talk yes. about. Yeah. So, um, Trish Bolton. Uh, whenever you're ready, Trish is a debut author this year. It must have only come out a month or two ago, yeah. I think. And it's just such a beautiful book. It's beautifully written. Um, very heartfelt. Mm. Uh, it's quite um, 
a unique subject. Uh, mm. it's, it's basically centering about around older protagonists and getting older and what, what that looks like and what your life choices are, which mm. makes it sound heavy, but of course they're lovely people with lives. And, and I work in a nursing home as, yes. a, as a communications manager. And believe me, I see every day 136 people who all have lives, mm -hmm. you know, and they've had very interesting lives and, and you just want them to live their best life until the mm. end. And there's that lovely flavor in this book that um, mm. you really get this sense of, gosh, that's what it's like. You know, it's written mostly from the perspective of a lady that's sort of mid sixties, I mm. think. Mm. Um, and yeah, there's something something funny that she does as well with her money, which that's a bit of a spoiler, so I won't say it. But yeah, I thought, go girl. Yeah, <laughs> look, I I'm actually seeing a lot of people talking about this one now too. So it's one of those word of mouth books that you know women are passing on to each other, which I think is wonderful. And uh, more of that, please. Uh, and that's one yes. of the great things about better reading. But um, now, is yours your book in audio? Mm. Who do you who read it? Do you know the? Yes, uh, it's an amazing narrator called Jennifer Vilichik. Um, she is someone who I listen to um, Loretta Hill. I think I listened mm. to an audio book of hers last year, and, and it was before I had an audio deal. I, mm. But I listened to this book. And thought, wow, you could tell she was a voice actor. Right? Yes, and amazing. There were lots of characters, lots of accents. Um, and she happened to be <laughs> free for when, from when my audio deal came I think through. I know her. I think she might have um, narrated Emboldened by um, Belinda Alexandra That's as true. well. And it's the same, lots of different accents. She's lots very of, clever. Yeah. She's a mm. trained voice NIDA actor. And she narrated uh, Julia Gillard's memoir as well. Yeah. So um, for me, it was quite extraordinary listening to yes. the audio book because it was like, I was listening to it. I didn't know anything that had happened. Yeah. And and by the time the last proof edit goes off to the publisher, you're so sick of your book. <laughs> you never want to read it again. Yeah. So I thought, oh, I'm not. I'm probably going to get a couple of pages in. I just wanted to hear how it sounded, you know. And I was just gripped because yeah. because she was so clever. It, it's like a cross between uh, reading it and seeing a stage play. Mm. You know? And some audio books I noticed. Um, I think it. Oh, I listened to oh, the Lisa Jewell one recently. Mm. We were just talking about um, they changed. That's it. None of this is true. Mm. This, this as an audio book, um, they have different voice narrators. Mm. So I thought that was quite interesting. They changed the point of view and you could hear the actor change, mm. not just male, female. Yes. Um, and, and it, it was literally like listening to a stage play. It was yeah. quite extraordinary. Yeah, I've heard, been hearing mm. more of those. I do a lot of Amazing. audio and I love audio, but I tend to do non-fiction. And we talk about this. I often ask the readers, you know, if they're doing audio as well. And um, I was always a purist. No, a book is, you know, a book. And then I had two dyslexic sons and the only way to get them to read at level was actually to have audio on as well so I became a convert then and then now I, I'm so busy and I drive a lot and I listen to a lot in the car but like you when I listen to Tilda in audio it's um it, I was sick of reading it mm -hmm. like and doing the edits but then I I had the opportunity to listen to it and the way that you hear it inside mm -hmm. of your head some of it they get it like that. But other times it's yeah. their interpretation and their performance yes. of your work. So it's like you're a little bit separated yeah. from your own work. The and you listen, are oh, different. It's, it's quite great. Wonderful. It's a really great experience to have mm. as a writer, I think. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was worth paying. I've obviously had to buy it myself. Yeah. It was, it was worth paying fifteen bucks yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it was. Don't worry, you get a royalty. So <laughs> <laughs> so um uh, Yvonne is uh, reading What Happened uh, to Nina um, by Dervla McTinn and that's her latest. Uh, a lot of people are reading that at the moment. Um, Helen says Yvonne just finished this today. 
Um, Carol is reading Body of Lies by Sarah Bailey. There's a few of you reading that. Um, uh, Rhea, hi Rhea, saying um, The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. So which one, you just read a Lisa Jewell, didn't I you? I just listened to the audio yes. of this. None of This yeah. Is True. I, d I don't know how uh, recent this is. I have a feeling it might be a few years back. A few years back. Mm. Um, but it was just, uh, it was an audio book actually on my library app. So it was a bit random, but I mean, <laughs> it's one of those books where, mm. you know, you're taking your phone to the bathroom because you just have to keep yeah. listening, yeah. you know, and then you're pressing play as soon as you're out of the shower. Absolutely gripping. Yeah. So is that, I, I don't know. And was that, the, so So now are you going to go and read more Lisa Jewell yes, books? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, when you feel like a thriller though, like probably like everyone, mm. I don't, only read thrillers or detectives or yeah. you know uplit like the kind of book that I've written, which I feel is similar genre to the Jojo Jojo Moyes. Yes. Um, I don't only read those books, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's nice, and you get something different out of every book because mm. some authors are better at um, exposition, some people mm -hmm. are better at dialogue, some people are fantastic at uh, the hooks. Yes. So, I mean, as a writer, you're reading it thinking, oh, that's a great hook. Oh, that's good. Yes. Oh, I see what they yeah. did there. You know what I mean? But of course, as a reader, you're not necessarily looking at the craft of it. You're just, yeah. you want something that compels you and there's always something, something different. No one's brilliant at everything. Yeah. Yeah, I was saying to you things. earlier that I, I speed read so much with this that I, I'm missing like really kind of diving into books and uh, and seeing what I'm learning as a writer as well. Um, but speaking of books that um, we're speed reading here, um, Looking Out by Fiona McCullum, we know that so many of you love her books. This is a suspenseful book. Um, read set in the Adelaide Hills um, and uh, the shout line for Take it back. is uh, a moving and suspenseful, suspenseful story of family dynamics, obsession and the power of true friendship um, and she always nails that, she really does. There's a really good review um, on our site from someone else who reviewed it and then the rest of us are going to be passing it around over the weekend. Uh, and Another one is um, that's out at the moment. Have you read any Amanda Hampson? No, I've had my eye on the tea ladies for a while. Yes, yes. And so she sort of started in more kind of um, women's fiction and stuff, okay. but it's really moved into this um, cosy crime. Oh, like Richard Osman. Yeah, type. well, it is like Richard Osman, but women's friendship is at the centre of gotcha. it. Gotcha. Uh, and, but, yes, yeah, so for fans of, of Richard Osman, but um, this is The Tea this. Ladies and uh, it's full of scones, heart, adventure. It's it's just great. Um, it's set in, this was the first, I'm not very good at holding them up. So, oh, Cryptic Clue is oh, just coming out one. now. Tea Ladies was the first one. So it's set in 1960s Sydney. Uh within the rag trade and uh, and it became a bit of a runaway bestseller, actually, the tea ladies. So they're back, Hazel, Betty and Irene are back and they're back solving a, quite a big crime a, sort of at a national level uh, this time. And I think Cozy Crime, it's really, it's it's always actually um, had a fan base within the indie publishing mm -hmm. sort of scene, um, but it's come over to traditional publishing now because I think people around the time of COVID and everything, people just wanted a little bit of a break from the, you know, people who love crime and everything, they wanted a bit of a break from dead bodies, I guess. And uh, and so, you know, Richard Osman and, um, and Amanda Hampson and the like are doing exceptionally well. And I think this one will go very, very well as, as well. Um, two more books for my TBR. Yes, yes. Uh, I always say that one of these days I'll probably have my TBR fall on me and people will be like, where's Jane gone? <laughs> <laughs> Call emergency services. Birds of a feather. 
Rihanna King. Have you read this yet? It's um, no, well again on the list. Yes, it's probably on the list. Quite close to the top, maybe third. <laughs> yes, yeah. So um, look, it's great. It's a funny intergenerational story about a woman who doesn't feel like she fits into her family, but um, very close to her grandmother wins. Um, a lottery decides to do something for her grandmother grandmother doesn't want anything but to search for her first love and uh, with very interesting outcomes and it is it's it really does it's up lit. it falls into mm. a very similar category as yours with mm. some very sim serious well, themes the yeah cover design it's it's very similar yes I mean not saying that it's copy or anything i'm just yeah. saying the feel of them. yes yeah you can see falls into get. the same genre right. yeah yeah so um and as you say uh same publisher and um they do these particular reads extremely well so talk to me about your writing process i know that you've joked and said you're not you know you're struggling like unlike um Burr, Burr. Mm, who's got her next book written you're struggling to do that but you're actually not you've nearly done aren't you well, yeah, nearly being a relative term um so <laughs> i have written two other manuscripts which the first was the first one i ever wrote mm. then the second is my book, this book yes now and I'll hold that third, up for everyone to see <laughs> mm -hmm. the third is my most recent that I've written. But the one I'm working on for my next launch is the first manuscript. So uh, it's a obviously similar genre type uh, book, very uplit, mm. um, set in Sydney again. But working, the writing process for that book was different, very, very different from the other two because it was the very first thing I ever wrote. Yeah. And it's back in the days where you literally don't have a clue when you've done a couple of creative writing mm. courses you think oh i might write a book i'd been sick for a while and i was getting very bored and <laughs> annoying everyone and i thought my husband said oh just write a book like just like that so i thought oh, okay might do that anyway off i went ba -ba 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 -ba. had so much fun making all this stuff up <laughs> um you know and i and i honestly remember sitting at a cafe thinking you know all oh, this so the taxi would go, but, oh, but maybe I'll make one of my characters a taxi driver. Oh, no, I'll make them an Uber driver. And then I'd write the whole chapter there and then. So going back to that manuscript mm. now, and, and which it definitely has, um, you know, the story structure is sound and it's going to make a good book. But, of course, revising it and reviewing it, I'm looking at it thinking, what, what am I talking about? <laughs> Yeah. What's this chapter got to do with the price of fish? Oh, so, so much of it's just pulling stuff out and then you can see all these holes and then uh, then you realise you've got to put something in the hole. Mm. So writing new scenes from a, from a, another character's perspective is being quite painful, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's a good exercise, <laughs> though. And how attached are you to your words? Oh, I'm less and less attached yeah. as time goes on. Yes. So with, yeah. when I wrote that book and I didn't have anything else obviously I needed to hold on to all of it because it was all yes, wonderful every I word it. counts yes. right but yeah uh, that's right yeah. and then with this book with the good woman's guide actually uh the original manuscript was 120,000 words mm. so for um listeners viewers it's a frame of reference this this mm. final novel and most novels that we've been talking about have probably between 85 and 90,000 yeah. words. Mm. So 120,000 words, obviously too many. But that's how much I'd written, and that was three characters' points of view, and mm. I just, that that was still at the submission stage. So mm. anyway, long story short, um, I met an agent and she said, just yes, send it to me. And I had become friends with Joanna Nell, the most wonderful, talented mm. Janet, Joanna Nell. And she had given me advice on it and she said, look, it's too long. Mm. She said, the publisher's just not going to look at it. Mm. So even if you love it, I really recommend you cut it before mm -hmm. you send it. Mm. Because I think the temptation is as a writer, you kind of think, well, if they love it enough, they'll just put it all mm. in there. 
Yeah. They're not going to do that. I'm no. nobody. Yeah, nobody. You know, nobody. mine was 108,000. Was it? Yeah. So I took it down to 88,000. Oh, okay. So, 88, yeah, that's yeah. obviously the affirm yeah. number because that's what I sold. <laughs> 88. Anyway, um, 120. So I thought to myself, right, 25,000. I thought I'd get it, try and get it down to 95. Under 100 basically felt mm. like, you know, submittable. Yeah. Um, and so 25,000 words had to go. And it was remarkably straightforward because there was such a huge amount. I did not, I couldn't afford to be going down rabbit holes and saying, oh, but I really like this bit mm. and I really like, no, 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 there's no time at all. So I effectively had to reef out most of one of my characters. He's still very much in it. He still has some point of view mm. and scenes, but his whole mm. subplot, as it were, mm. as soon as I read his scenes, I thought, yeah, they got to go. They're the ones that have to go. Yeah, because they just were the least relevant to the mm. overall plot yeah. and theme of, of the novel. So literally, whole swathes. And because I write in a software program called Scrivener, I'm quite organised. Mm. I put all my chapters and so on down the side, so I could see the ones that, you know, his main chapters. I could literally just pull them all into a separate folder and then mm. re-stitch everything together. So it was relatively straightforward. It didn't take me long at all, a yes. week, I reckon. And I thought, it's all right. Mm. Editing's easy. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, how wrong could I have been? Yeah. And because, of course, wonderful, wonderful affirm pick it up. And um, Kelly, Jane and I have got the same publisher, Kelly, and um, she said, look, it's great, it's wonderful, da 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 mm. It's it's still 95,000, mm. um, you need to get it down to 88. Yeah. The magic of them. So 7,000 words. Well, do you think I could get rid of That's where you seven... take a real blowtorch to oh, things you're attached to. Goodness. I like it. I like it. It's like a decluttering process was... for me. You just declutter. You just get rid of it. You get well, the 25,000 <laughs> was the declutter. Yeah. But then the 8,000 was the... Um, was the emotional attachment. Yeah, getting rid of stuff you're just never going to wear again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so, and it did come down to line by line, honestly, yes. by the end. Because then, of course, you're going in thinking, all right, what's really happening in this scene? And you'd have a couple of paragraphs. Yes. Yeah. Look, there's not really a lot happening. I could take one out, and then I think I really like that paragraph. No, I just can't. So it just took so long. So I went through the whole thing about four times. But you I'm... know what the result is? A very, very polished read. And that's what happens when you go through line by line and you really, like, what is the most efficient way of saying this yeah, as well that's right. and and the final manuscript the one that goes to print sings and so you know to our readers here i can absolutely <laughs> highly recommend picking up the good women's guide to making better choices just yeah. in case i stumbled over the title there um but uh look at all these wonderful people who are uh, we'll go through and and read oh, them trish as well bolton. oh look stacy saying loved whenever you're ready i have trish bolton's book oh. on my love yet yeah, oh. meredith says wonderful um if you're looking for another read this weekend grab hold of it go and go and get a copy um liz you can go on and say hi to people later if they're commenting to you yes, if you have any other too. questions for liz Pop them in here. Um, our time is up now, but I, I just want to, one thing actually, going back to the audio book, uh, we've just released um, a podcast. Can you pop up the podcast? So it's um, Jason Norbury who wrote um, uh, Big Panda and, no, sorry, yeah, Big, Big Panda, Panda and Tiny Panda. Dragon, yeah, which of course was a huge, huge success. Uh, but we had him on to talk about the release of the audio book version of it. And I, I was curious as to how that was going to go because, you know, it's so visual, this book. But um, they have J Jason Isaacs reading it. Yes, ladies. You can thank me later. Uh, yeah, so if you're looking for some, if you're looking for a really good bedtime story, seriously, Liz, that Stick voice. Jason oh. Isaacs in your ears. Oh, hello. Anyway, so uh, there's another tip. 
as well as Liz's book. Thanks, Liz, for coming in and it's chatting to us today. And if anyone wants to do my book, would like to do my book book club, I'm really happy to either come in person in Sydney or Zoom in. Yeah. So um, just get in touch. Reach out. To hear from you. All right. Thanks, everyone, and we will see you next.